So cryptocurrency is absolutely on fire. Everybody wants to know about it and people are mortgaging their houses and all types of stuff is coming out. All types of new coins are coming out and people really want to know what this is. In this video, we're going to talk about the five steps that you can use to start investing in cryptocurrencies. Look, experienced traders have been looking at and dealing with and investing in cryptocurrency for a few years now. And a lot of people are in that fear of missing out and they're jumping on to this craze, if you will. Now, it's not bad thing at all by any means. Let's go into how you can start to invest now, though. Now, I've talked about this and sometimes I get flack for it, but full disclosure, it's volatile. And so you need to know what you're doing. First thing first, though, and I'm going to say this, even though I get some amount of flack for this, make sure you have an emergency fund. Make sure you've saved enough money you're comfortable with losses. Make sure that you have some amount of a diversified portfolio. That means stocks, and I didn't know, but the big capital B word, which I still think is very relevant, is the bonds. Stocks, bonds, real estate, all of these kind of things. Make sure you have some amount of money in some other areas as well, because crypto is speculative. That means it could change back and forth really quickly. So after I've said that, let's get into the nitty gritty. So the first thing I want to talk about, number one, understand what you're investing in. Spend a little bit of time. You don't have to be an expert to start investing, but at least know your way around. Know the different cryptocurrency. Know a little bit of its history. Know what you're investing in. What's the company about? Think about this. If I was going to give you some information on how to invest in a stock, you would probably want to go and look at a prospectus. You know the company. You wouldn't just invest in the company without kind of seeing what that company is all about. That's value investing in a nutshell seeing all the reports, knowing who the players are, knowing what they sell, right? But people are jumping into cryptocurrency, kind of taking that analysis or analyzing completely out the door. With stocks, if a company's share rises because of profitability or profit and losses, if it can go up or down, and you can kind of understand that. With cryptocurrency, it's just kind of left to anything. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of people who are the new crypto investors to say otherwise, but there aren't many safeguards in place as well. There are security issues as well. And when the stock market is doing really well, guess what? Crypto does really well at the same time. So it's kind of connected in a way, but not because it's more emotion based at this point. So before you invest, make sure you don't put all your eggs in that one crypto basket, right? understanding that you could lose greatly. You can earn greatly as well, but because it's not really tied to hard assets or cash flow or profit and loss or any of those things that we think about traditional businesses, you could end up losing quite a lot of money, if not everything. So try not to mortgage your house and put it all into crypto because you think you're gonna become a billionaire. Number two, history is always a mystery. So it doesn't matter what somebody else made in crypto five years ago or when it first started out or that it was worth less than a penny. It, it doesn't matter, quite frankly. It's what are you paying for it now? What do you perceive the value to be later? And could it go back down? So don't look at the past as, oh my God, you know, it was worth X, Y, Z, now it's worth that. That's not really a good reflection to think about. It doesn't matter what your mama paid for the house. It doesn't matter what your aunt paid for the house. It doesn't really matter what somebody else paid for that particular product 30, 40, 50 years ago. It only matters what you're paying now. And I always like to say this one analogy and you can understand. If I'm waiting for bread to go back down to 15 cents, what my parents paid for, I'll go hungry because it'll never go down to 15 cents a loaf. Even with inflation, 
peaking up uh, you know, above 7% and consumer price index hovering way above 5%. I don't ever see bread going down in price or hamburgers or you know, commodities or the price of cars, the price of houses. So get that theory or that notion that it'll go back down to that level again out and then you won't have to worry about what somebody else paid for it. So you wanna focus on will this kind of growth continue in the future? Investors tend to look at what is it gonna produce in the future? Is that growth likely impossible? And that's what you wanna ask yourself. Number three is you have to watch out for volatility. It's an important conversation to have. I mean, some billionaire could just go ahead and plug one single crypto currency and there's a hundred cryptocurrencies developing all the time now they could just say hey buy this and all of a sudden the price can go up or down and fluctuate and if you've got all your money in one thing you got to understand that it is volatile now with risk comes reward and we all understand that factor but just a lot of people don't know that it's volatile they think that it's going to continue to go up and what goes up always comes down or at least settles down and goes back up. It's just a marketplace. And if you've seen my other content on what creates a change or fluctuation in the stock market or the real estate market or in the crypto market, it's backed by human emotion. Now, the economy is just a reflection of our own human behavior, right? So why wouldn't the crypto markets also experience great ups and downs at the same time. Volatility is really critical for small investors and newer investors who are just beginning because let's face it, the big Wall Street dogs may not really have to worry about it. You know, they're in it for the long haul. But a lot of people that are just getting in it might get nervous. You might buy really high and sell because you don't want to lose all of it. Number four is managing your risk. Your risk tolerance is really important to consider. Now, depending on what stage in life you are, if you're just coming out, you're making a lot of money, you have very little bills, you have no family or no mouths to feed, you might be a little riskier. Later on in life, when like me, I've got kids to put through college, I've got businesses to worry about, I'm not gonna go ahead and put everything into one type of investment. I just won't do it because my risk tolerance is getting less and less as I get older and older. And so depending on where you are in life, and you could be getting older and older, but have less things to worry about, and maybe you have more cash flow and you can put it into things. So it all depends on what your risk tolerance is. And so understanding that is vital and important and looking at, hey, these are the bills I have. I can't over leverage myself. And you need to do an analysis of ex exactly how much you can put into each type of investment. So be it crypto. A lot of long term investors just buy and hold. And that's a great strategy for the amount of money they might have. They might have a, a large allocation and they say, you know what, it doesn't matter if the value goes up or down. For example, in real estate, having apartment buildings, it doesn't really matter what I paid for it. As long as I'm holding it, I know the value over time will go up. Whereas a lot of people who speculate in real estate, like the flippers, they come in, they buy low and they try to sell high. But what if values fell? The thing that would happen is most people will let their homes go and that's what ends up happening quite a lot. So the same thing, if you have less risk tolerance, find out exactly how much you could lose and still be able to walk away or be comfortable. Is it 10%? Is it 5%? and then set that bar so the moment if you hit those numbers, you know you have to pull out. So number five is kind of just ties in with what I was talking about. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Look, at the end of the day, all investment is risk. You risk your money no matter what you do with it. The moment it comes out of the bank and even in the bank, it's at risk, right? Some banks here in the US are only insured for a certain amount. Let's say you have a whole lot. You're risking all the time. But when it comes to speculative assets like crypto, you're risking a lot more. 
Stocks are risky, ETFs are risky, NFTs are risky, EFTs are risky, everything's risky out there. So just understanding that um, I've got X amount and I'm only willing to lose this much is really important. Uh, if it's not a percentage, then at least you know, hey, you know what? I wanna make a down payment on a house that my wife and I wanna move into, or you know, I'm planning for retirement now. Uh, understanding, you know, if you need cash in a little bit, like a few months or a few weeks, you wouldn't necessarily take that money and go to Vegas to go and gamble. I want you to think of it the same way. You wouldn't necessarily take a whole bunch of money that you have allocated to something coming up in your life or that you're gonna need. The kids are about to go to college. They're 17 and a half years old and you decide to put their $100,000 that you were gonna send them to college with and put it into crypto. And there's a reason why the first three letters of crypto spell cry. And that's because if you play around with it and get messed up, you're definitely gonna cry. There's some big wins along the way as well, but I want you to really, really manage your money, manage your risk and understand what you're doing. Let's talk about the fact that, you know, certain crypto exchanges and places where you buy crypto are not always as secure as you think they are. A lot of people have lost money and even gone through fraud. And security is a big issue right now. The SEC is really looking at crypto exchanges and crypto companies operating here in the United States. Um, I know there's some ways to mitigate the safety or the security of it by getting a crypto wallet or something secure like that. Understand that you need to do some research before you start to put your money in. Now, I'm not sponsored. I'm gonna have some links down below so that you can start to invest in crypto if you want to. Totally unsponsored, I don't even have affiliate links. Go ahead and freely click. If you wanna find out more about saving money, go ahead and check out this video.